Hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's Gold Nugget from God's Word. Today I'm going to be talking about our commission. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 28. And here we have Jesus speaking. And it's not just to these disciples, folks. That's the thing we need to uh, first take away from this is this commission was given to them, but it's also given to you and I. And here's what the Lord said uh, starting with verse number 18 of Matthew 28, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That word disciple means to, to make a learner. Uh, a disciple of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the world, end of the age. Uh, now, that word commission uh, has that prefix C-O-M on it, commission. And that means that together, jointly, that we are to do this, this uh, task that the Lord has given to us. And that's the, the rest of it is the word mission. That commission is a task that we are accomplishing together as learners of Christ, as disciples of Jesus. And the Lord focused on here, he said that he has all power, all authority. And folks, the word all means inclusive of everything. That means whatever power that there is in God's creation, the Lord has all power over all of that. And his authority is included in that, not only the power of over it, but the authority over those things. What's the, the difference between those two? Uh, the, the power in something is what makes it, it work, which makes it uh, operate. And so the Lord has the power over all those things. He is the charge, if you will, or the, uh, the beginning of it all all those things, but he also has the authority over it. So it's it's not just saying I have electricity at my house, but I have the authority over that electricity in my house, uh, whether it comes on or not by switching the flip. So the Lord's saying, I have all authority. I have all power over those things. And the Lord says, I, I've given you this commission. I want you to go for, I want you to make disciples. I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want you to do those things. And we think to ourselves, well, I can't do that. Uh, I, I'm a shy person, or I don't have the knowledge of the Bible, or I don't have the ability to do those things. But the Father says here, remember, in verse 20, he says, I am with you always to the end of the age, that the Lord is always with us. So whatever it is that we're afraid of doing, we have no no reason to fear because the Lord is with us and he will always be with us as his children through the good days, the bad days, when we're being holy and righteous. And even in those days when we have failed and we're sinning, the Lord is with us. He's always with us. He never forsakes us. So we have the authority. We have the power of God within us as the Holy Spirit has taken residence in us as the children of God, we have that. And so we need to just claim that and, and, and let that keep us from having fear of following the commission. But folks are so terrified of doing that, uh, afraid to go and share Jesus with somebody else because we're afraid of rejection. And, and folks, there will be rejection. There's going to be times when you share Christ with someone and they're going to say, hey, I, I, I don't want to hear that. I, I don't believe that way. And uh, the thing is, we take it on ourselves that we have to save somebody or we have to change somebody. And the thing we need to understand is the power and the authority that is with us is not ours. It's the Lord's power and authority. We're just that vessel he's using as a witness in somebody's life. So all we need to do is surrender to that and share with other people the, the words, the truth of Christ, and then he will be the one that will speak into their life, into their heart. Even though they might, might reject us at the door, 
when we walk away, the Lord is still working on that person. And we have to always remember that. Um, there are going to be times when you see someone receive Christ right there on the, at that moment when you share with them. And what a joy that is. But don't discount the times that you share Christ and someone says no. Because even though you walk away and go share with somebody else, the Lord is still present working in that person's life and in that person's heart. And that person may call you back sometime later and say, hey, I couldn't get you off my mind. Or I couldn't get the words you shared with me off my mind. You see, God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword is what the Bible says. And so as we speak truth into somebody's life, it will pierce the heart. And God's truth can be revealed, even though we may not be the ones to see it immediately. Uh, we pick up next over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 16. And here we have the writing which says, From now on, then we do not we do not know anyone from a worldly perspective, even if we have known Christ from a worldly perspective, yet now we are no longer, yet now we no longer know him in this way. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation, the old's passed away, and the new has come. Everything from God. Everything is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them. And he has committed the message of reconciliation to us. So what, what he's wanting us to understand and grab hold of is this. The Lord has reconciled us into, to himself and so we're a new creation in him and as being a new creation in Christ there should be joy and excitement and and that feeling of um, desiring to just tell other people about it. Uh, have you ever been in a situation or been somewhere and you've just witnessed people celebrating? For example, ball games. Uh, I was at a ball game last night. Uh, my grandson had a uh, coach pitch ball game, baseball game last night. And in that game, there were moments where I'm sitting in my chair comfortable and all of a sudden something happened and I stood up. There were moments when I, words came out of my mouth speaking to my grandson on the field. And um, even though he had a coach out there from the sidelines, Papa was trying to coach a little bit more and remind him of what he needs to do. Folks, that's that's what we're to be doing. Or maybe you've been in a uh, stadium watching a football game, or maybe even at your own home, where you're sitting there in your chair, and you're watching uh, a football game, and those players, nobody other than maybe your family, if they're in the room with you, can hear you, but you get excited and words come out of your mouth as you're speaking to the television of all things. And uh, whether it's joy or anger or whatever, those things are coming out. The point in all that is this. Um, when Christ takes residence in our life, there is a joy that comes. We are a new creation in him. And that new joy, that creation, all those things, they want to come out. Most people, when they first get saved, and in those early days of their walk with the Lord, they're so thankful that God saved them that they talk about it a lot. But then as life goes on and we fall under the, the, the battle of Satan constantly picking at us and trying to draw us back into sin, even though we're saved and we can't lose our salvation, but he never leaves us alone. He's always trying to bring us down. And it's during those days when that excitement about our salvation and that sharing with others about what Christ is in our life, it tends to seem to calm down and we just don't express that as much 
Uh, too often we think, well, I'm saved, and now that I'm saved, life is going to be just a bed of roses. And often we find out that Satan's got some thorns in there that he throws at us, and those thorns hurt. And when those thorns come into our life, we just struggle. And it's during those times the Lord says, lean on me and let me help you through your difficult times. Uh, he says in Psalm 46, that verse 1, he says that he is our refuge, our strength, the very present help in times of trouble. Um, we are a new creation, and we need to hold on to that. We have this worldly perspective. If you go back to verse 16, from now on, then we do not know anyone from a worldly perspective. Even if we have known Christ from a worldly perspective, yet now we no longer know him in this way. In other words, I, I knew Christ as the man of God, and, and my worldly perspective of him was just what I could read, what I could touch, what I could see, what I could hear about. But when you become a new creation in Christ, you understand the spiritual aspect of it. You understand the Holy Spirit's working and the movement of that in the lives of not only yourself, but other people. And then in feeling that new creation, excitement comes up. And just like you get excited about a baseball game, you get excited about the things of the Lord. And even more so because it's not something that's going to just be over within a few hours like a football game would be. That excitement with the Lord is an ongoing thing. It's a movement that's constantly inside of you. Are you going to have days when you're down and you're struggling? Absolutely. Those are the days that we're allowing the things of that worldly knowledge, that worldly perspective perspective, to creep in and, and have a hold on our life. Folks, we need to rebuke that and realize we are a new creation in Christ and we have so much to be thankful for. The last couple of verses are verses 20 and 21. It says, therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God. We are to be an agent of the Lord, a messenger of the Lord, carrying the good news of Jesus Christ so we would see people become devoted to Christ, to see lives changed, to see people uh, commissioned to go forward in their own walk with the Lord and to make a difference in this world that we're living in. Um, we are ambassadors of for Christ, authorized agents, messengers of the good news of Jesus Christ. What a great, wonderful, exciting responsibility that is. You have a great opportunity to help somebody that's struggling by telling them some good news, and that good news is Jesus Christ. That's your mission. It's your commission. It's what the Lord's told you to, to go do. Go ye therefore, therefore. He wants you to make disciples. He wants to see you baptize people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. The question is, will you? Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this study today. Help us to take the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord, and to openly share it, Lord, with people, to live it in front of other people, to not just expect people to come up to us and say, hey, I want to get saved, how do I do that? Lord, it, it rarely happens that way. You desire for us to walk in front of people and let that light shine in our life, Lord, so that people can see the love, joy, happiness that we have and that they would desire that in their own life. Forgive us when we fail you, Lord. Use us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, I pray you have a great rest of your day. I hope you'll join me for worship this morning at 11 o'clock. We're starting Sunday school back up. So if you're looking for a Sunday school class, we will have one for you. That starts at 10. So come join us for Sunday school and then stay for worship at 11. We're having a great time in the Lord today. God bless you. 
I hope to see you soon.